Thanks for watching D2 Wrenchworks and DIY. Today's video, we are going to replace the matrix clutch, and you can see I have an array of things here from some tools on the end we're going to need specifically for this job, make your life much easier, some specific hardware, and other odds and ends that even if you aren't doing a matrix clutch like I am, it's really going to be the same steps along the way to get the transmission out and get your clutch out and inspect everything. And there's also things you're going to also going to want to do for your vehicle's clutch because you want to do things like on the end here we have axle seals. This is something that's going to be super important. You don't want to do this whole big job and then you put it all together and it's leaking out the transmission. You know what I mean? Kind of blow up your transmission and it does all your work, right? So let's get into it right now. For our flywheel, you're not supposed to reuse it. Honestly, I would always reuse them at least once anyways. To tell you the truth, it doesn't hurt anything. It shouldn't break if you torque it properly. And uh, I've seen people put the red Loctite right back on it. I decided to go ARP because we hope to have this vehicle for a long time. So I got some new reusable hardware and it comes with assembly lube. There's like a complicated little process I have to do to properly install these, which I will make sure to do. Do not want to forget, I got a nice clutch here, which we'll get into right after this, but ACT, Exedi, uh, no matter what, if you ever read about people running these clutches in daily drivers, the problem is the throw up bearings are all the same Chinese crap. So we are going to put a Toyota OEM, this is actually specifically Red Box Toyota, uh, throw up bearing in here with the clip and all that. So. That's a must have. It is a little more than I like to spend on something as simple as a throw out bearing, but how much is your time worth to re pull the transmission and do this stupid thing again when it starts squalling like crazy? You got a dead animal in your transmission. You don't want that. The 6 speed transmission is pretty notorious for having kind of shifting issues in the cold or in inclement weather, and sometimes, like if you like to drive a little spirited, it might grind. A lot of those issues are due to the transmission fluid never being serviced. And if you've seen the clip, I'll put it in here right next to you over here. It's pretty bad. It's quite black and it was definitely low. So I am going to do a blend of Valvoline Synchro Mesh. It takes two and a half of these bottles. So I will do two of these and one Redline MT90. The Redline MT90 everybody loves, but the transmissions in our car really love the Synchro Mesh. So I've heard people have best luck when they mix them up a little bit and that's what I'm going to do. So I don't really want to spend a ton of time waiting on a machinist. Like I had to with the Forenza that really sent me back like a month. So what I am going to do, or did, is I just bought a Luck LUK flywheel here for the price of essentially what anybody would charge you to resurface it and your time there and back. It's just not worth it. Buy a brand new one. People have said online too, they think these are refurbished. No. Read the description. It's actually brand new from the factory. It's their own. So that is a great option for us. Now, because my hands are a little dirty, I don't want to touch too much in here. You really want to make sure that your clutch pad and all of that stays clean. But I can show you what we have here. And this is a Exedi 16800. This holds about 20% over stock power. Being that the Matrix is a slight bit heavier than the Corolla, or no, the Celica it originally came in, I decided it'd be better to get a little better clutch. Also, maybe I could take some spirited driving to the track and stuff like that and not have to worry about it. We got the clutch disc in here, and I'll show you what that looks like because I took pictures ahead of time. And the pressure plate right there. All pretty good looking units. The annoying thing is that you spend the good money on something like this and you still gotta spend a little bit more, not just on the bearing, but also the clutch tools. This will not work for the Toyota 2 ZDR. You need to buy an ACT ACT. And what this has is a false little pilot bearing that you insert inside and you hold it up in there and you just leave the pilot bearing in there for future. So it's easy to keep using this, reusing this and that's a pretty cool little addition. Makes your life way easier and you don't have to worry about getting anything filthy dirty trying to align it by yourself, by yourself with a screwdriver or whatever. All right, we move over to this side now. For when we have the clutch out and all of that, you do not want to forget to do your rear main seal. This is pretty much a must do when you have the flywheel off. Again, we are going to go Toyota brand on that. Toyota seals last forever. Our Forerunner has the original cam seals in it and it literally hasn't been leaking 248,000 miles on it. So kind of crazy. Our, I mentioned we have axle seals. These are going to be Toyota brand as well. I want them to be nice. I want them to last. We have other things for future jobs that you know you don't have to do now, but if you do have this car, you should definitely think about doing the VVPI filter right there in the top of the head. 
and the crush washer, the bolt, it had the bolt that you extract, and this filter actually connects to it, and get a new crush washer for that so it doesn't leak. Since we are already, you will see one, right, one of the first things we do is we pull off the hoses to the PCB and the throttle body. There's a double, like, four end piece hose there. We take that out, and we're going to be replacing the PCB when we get the transmission back in. Another Toyota part. Ours is pretty bad on the car, so. I did mention we have issues with the shifting on the transmission in these cars. Brass bushings will make your life so much easier. These are all brass, and this is from Monkey Wrench Racing, very popular kind of racing style site. So, so I'm gonna go with these. They're like 25 bucks. It's totally worth it. You're gonna have the trans out on the ground. You just pop those bad boys right in. And lastly, but not leastly, a must-have tool. You really should. Be all right. So, I thought that these would be an excellent must-have. The problem is they're super long. They're not that much different than the shorter pry bars, but they're extremely strong. It is great that they have the little wedge, but in something like the Matrix, like the K-Member's in the way, there's almost no area for you to really get in there and wedge it. It's pretty difficult to get into the driver's side axle. Passenger just pops right out, no problem. If you do use these spoons, be careful, because I split my axle. I did not harm it, but I just barely touched the little metal clip there, and it just poop popped right off because of the bungee cord pressure that I had which isn't a big deal. If this happens to you, you can clean the end of this up. You can get a new band clamp. Uh, they're like $10 on Amazon. I bought the nicer tool, which I'll show you all this later when I repair this in a different video, but just a little foreshadowing for you. I would go ahead and get a slide hammer. They have a claw type piece that goes inside in between. They're very thin and it's literally meant to cup around the actual CV axle and pull it out way easier, much un more uniformly. This is just a good pro tip for you because I was trying to save the money on these CV forks and I mean, yeah, they're only $25, but for you could rent one at AutoZone or something like this for free, or you could get them for around 60 bucks or so with a, a separate tip because a lot of the slide hammers don't come with a, a skinny tip like you need for these type cars. So I'll have all this in the description and you can check the parts out there. Also, if you look this up in the Toyota Tech Documents, they call it the SST tool, which is their slide hammer version with this little C-shaped piece to pull it, pull it out of the cup there. Uh, just wanted to throw that in. This is actually what Toyota says to do too. And like, I mean, if you look online, tons of people say the pry bars and everything work. If you have a second hand, somebody to help you, for sure it would help. So, time to get into work, let's go to it. First thing I wanted to do was check the slave cylinder, check the travel, check the pressure. I just gave it about 15 to 20 pumps, make sure it didn't get stronger as it went on. Maybe it needs to be bled, maybe the slave cylinder's broken. This wasn't the case, though. So. Now, to jack the vehicle up, I like to use the outermost corners of the K-member by the wheel well, as you see here, on both sides. I try to get it up around 24 inches. I was a little short. Take your time, try to get up to about 26 inches. I'm only at 20 inches from the center of the CV axle to the ground, and you'll see that here. It's just a little short and the extra space will really benefit you trying to get the driver's axle out because that's a pain. Now that it's lifted, you want to remove both wheels, the passenger and the driver's side. If you have OEM lug nuts, you'll use a 21 millimeter socket. Mine are splined, so I'm using a specialty tool you'll notice. Now we need to remove our stock air box or air intake in my case, as well as we need to also take off the two hoses that connect to each other. One of them connecting to the PCV valve I mentioned and the other one to the throttle body. All of that comes off. Use a 10 millimeter to remove the battery strap as well as the battery terminals then remove the battery. I'm not sure if this intake is specific for the XRS or not, but I had to unloosen the headlight as well as take the wiring from the fuse box out to get this out. And really, what we're doing is we're pulling the wire out right here. One plug, two plug, three plug. I'm gonna take this whole harness and battery, all of this, and tuck it out of the way. Now we're gonna move on to all this. Next, remove the battery tray with four 10 millimeter bolts. Now we slide underneath and we're gonna remove both splash shields on the passenger and driver side. Use a clip tool or a flathead screwdriver or a pick tool. The bolts will be at 10 millimeter on the splash shield. Jack it up from the engine and lift it up just enough to where the mount is no longer moving and block up underneath the engine. Time to drain the transmission using a short 24 millimeter. Go ahead and undo it and let all the fluid out. Okay, 12 millimeter for slave cylinder here.
Gonna have to try a bendy and a short 12 millimeter on the rifle. Fourteen millimeter for this other clutch line bolt. You have one less bracket at the rear here. Now we have room to take care of the shifter cables. Let's do that next. And we can access that one right through this hole. We have a view from the bottom right here and it should push right up. And as you just heard, a little washer that goes on the top will fall down like that. Our next one is right beside it here and it goes vertical. You can kind of see the clip. There you go, right there. And again, just push this one off, catch your washer. There we go. This is what both the clips and the washers look like. To remove the C clips on the shifter cables, I advise you to just as best as you can bathe them with some really good lubricant and get some very thin but stiff and strong pliers. You're going to have to really wrestle them. I use some good Nipexes as you just saw. Don't be scared to get something strong on them and really torque on them side to side. And once they're free, they will just slide out of the way. Now we got tons of space to pull it out. Now that we have all of our harnesses, cables, and lines out of the way, it is time to pin everything up so you can remove the transmission and not hurt anything. To remove the 30 millimeter axle nut, what we need to do is unstake the pin that is going to be inside of them. You want to use a step set of punches like I have here and slowly work it out. Remove the three lower ball joint bolts. Use a 2x4 to split them and pivot it out of the way. We just did drivers, but we are also going to do the passenger lower ball joint. Now we want to separate the axles from the hubs, and we want to pin them up with bungee cords or something like that so they are secure. Now, to make sure while you're under here, you don't want to get smashed by this CV axle right here. And so the way I have this bungeed up, it's actually pulling, pulling out. So when you hammer it, it'll be pushed away from you. And bungee our passenger side is put to the bracket of the power steering here. And I have them on the closed spring. And you just basically want to make sure they can swing freely without hitting anything and tearing the boot. Like I said, I don't advise you trying to waste your time with the pry bar method, but you could see me futilely attempting here. Okay, so I've tried a multitude of different crowbars here. You can see all the ones I had. If you don't get this after 10 minutes, completely stop what you're doing and just go get a sliding claw hammer. If you look at the Toyota actual manual, it says to use their SST tool, which is exactly what I have now. You'll see in the clip coming up, it makes this a cakewalk. So I tried to save the money on AutoZone by renting one of these bad boys and they're all out of stock. So I ended up buying a whole kit. And let me tell you, it took less than a freaking minute to pull the driver's side axle. So seriously, don't waste your time. Get you one of these slide hammers. And you specifically want to make sure that it has this OEM tools. You can tell here it's very thin where it cups on the inside there. Very nice piece. And just boom, 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 pull it right out. I got a nicer kit here, as you can see. This is so I can pull out like stuck pulleys or whatever have you. You see the OEM hard case there. See how destroyed my clutch was. <laughs> But yeah, this is pretty much a must-have. Makes the job cake. Here's a close-up of what to expect on the driver's side. And as you can see, tapping the tip in with the hammer, it'll pull the axle out in no time. At the rear of the engine, you'll find the axle carrier bearing for the passenger side, right in between the K-member and the oil pan. You have only two 14 millimeter bolts. And as soon as you can get that done, the axle will pop right out. And that's our passenger axle right there. Put the two 14 millimeter bolts back in, store it, and keep moving. All right, I made this little spacer. Got some scrap wood and some screws I recycled. See, we got the jack here. We are going to support the transmission before we take out the next mount here. 
time to remove the driver's side motor mount. I did forget to film removing the center bolt, but it is a 17 millimeter. The rest are 14s. Now for this last bolt right on the inside here, it's gonna, if you try to use a socket, it's gonna get caught up on this little metal piece. So use a wrench. Don't forget to do a quick inspection of your mount. If it's horribly broken and you could easily move it, it's time to replace. Mine is hard to move by hand, but it's still not great. I'm going to keep it though. Uh, last step here is these three bolts to finish off this motor mount. Twelve millimeter for that one. Now for the front motor mount, we use a fourteen millimeter. For three bolts. You're going to need a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench and at least a very thin socket and ratchet that might be able to fit for the other bolts. The top bolt you will have to use a wrench and a combo of another wrench to break it free because it is going to be very tight. This can be a little tedious but just be patient. To make life easier I use a paint marker to mark an indentation on which way this goes to orientate it in the future. The rear mount center bolt, we will need about two feet of extensions as you see here, along with a deep well 17 millimeter socket. And to get to it, you're gonna have to go through the wheel well. If you have the transmission all the way up like I do, it'll pull right out by hand. It is dark and nighttime as you can tell. Oops, blocking myself here. The transmission is gone. You see a big hole in there. Unfortunately, my phone died at the end. As I got the back mount off with the main bolt through, I dropped it and I was realizing it's still binding a little bit on the clamshell part. It's got like this big C where it slides into the mount. So the ear of the C was really just rubbing it and stopping it. So I dropped it really far down and I took this off this guy and it has three bolts. All of those are 14 millimeter. So you can access them very easily. I'll have pictures here you can see. And as soon as you get that done, the thing pops right off. Time to remove the bell housing bolts and what we will need to do is use a one foot and three inch extension plus a deep well socket. The big bolts are going to be 17 millimeter and the small ones are going to be 14 millimeter. We are going to leave the starter but remove the two bolts. The top left corner here is one of the starter bolts and the other one is going to be located underneath the intake manifold between the cooling fans. Now, there's bolts here on the bottom we gotta get. You see this bracket? One, two, three pieces of hardware attached to the exhaust manifold. This is gonna let us get to the bolts behind it for the bell housing right there. Now remove the two 14 millimeter bell housing bolts. For the top bolt here, you will need to use I got a medium length 14 millimeter to a reducer so I can have this on a half inch ratchet. And as you can see, it's basically pressed into the exhaust here. So you really got to get some leverage here because there's not much space. At the bottom of the transmission, right where you see the flywheel on the left and right corners are two bottom bell housing bolts, 14 millimeter. And here I'm trying to remove the transmission. You can see on the right rear, it is binding on the rear mount. Like I said, as soon as you have that done, it'll slide literally right off. It was only a few minutes later after I got the bolts done that I ran out of battery, but it did come right out by myself. As you can see here, no transmission, all empty. See, we got it out over here. I was able to just slide it out by myself. It's not too extremely heavy, so I had to push my jack out of the way and just kind of just slowly lowered it down and hit it put it on my chest and then rolled out of the way. So if it's a one person job, you could definitely handle it yourself. Six bolts for the pressure plate and these are 12 millimeters each. One thing you wanna make sure is to clean up all of this debris. We are gonna do lots and lots of cleaning coming up. For the 5 we only have eight bolts to take off and we are pretty much done for this video and for the day for me. It's hard to see, but this is a 12 point, I'll put a picture up, 14 millimeter socket.
taking a look at the clutch, you can see this thing is absolutely smoked. I mean, just shredded. There's, there's nothing there. Totally broken. All the organic material like fluffed out too. It's all it was in the starter. It's all over the inside of the motor. It's actually coming out behind the flywheel. Speaking of the flywheel, this thing's a mess. Tons of crazy hot spots all over it. These have a pretty tight tolerance as well, according to like Toyota spec. If you read their manual, and uh, I'm sure there's tons of high and low spots all over this, so really not worth it. Just better off getting a new one that's built to spec. Yeah, you can see there's still tons of fluff built into this everywhere. Alright, that concludes the video. We have covered pulling the transmission. Uh, let's see, I'm going to be doing the repair, the new flywheel, the new clutch, all torque values, all kinds of stuff in the next video, so do stay tuned for that. I also have a magnet flow catalytic converter, so I need to get some exhaust work done. And I'm going to use the lift bolts, which controls the VVTI for kind of like the Honda VTEC for Toyota. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned for more Matrix Project work. See you later. If you want to support the channel, please do. You can find us over at Patreon. You can also find us on YouTube memberships where we have two different types and you can support us there. I'd greatly appreciate it if you did. Thanks.